On a cold Wednesday night here in Doylestown, Pennsylvania, we welcome you in to James Work Gymnasium for tonight's second game of our Middle Atlantic Freedom Conference doubleheader between the Delaware Valley University Aggies and the visiting FDU Florham Devils. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Eric Hitch, Gordon Mann, producer Tony here and shot on the camera as we bring you the second game of our doubleheader. And if you want to play games at home in February in Division Three, you got to win them in January. Delaware Valley right in the thick of things in the hunt for a home game in the Middle Atlantic Freedom Conference Tournament. All nine teams will make the tournament. If you can get in those top four seeds, you will get a home game. And right now, Delaware Valley sits tied for fourth with Arcadia and Misericordia. Assuming that all the games that have been canceled because of COVID do not get played, Delaware Valley is right in the thick of things as DeSales and Lycoming have the top, uh, DeSales, Lycoming, and Stevens apparently have the top three seeds nailed down. And then it'll be a three way battle for that last home game. For FDU Florham, well, it's kind of the same story for their men's program as it is for their women's program. They have struggled this year. The Devils are winless in conference. Uh, they are have just three wins on the season. And so they know they'll go in the tournament, and they're just trying to get something going and play spoiler here to Delaware Valley. For the Yaggies, a win against Misericordia on Saturday, and then a game here tonight, Eric, that if you want to be at home in the playoffs, you got to win games like tonight. Yeah, that's correct. And uh, speaking of Saturday last week, uh, was a close one, a little bit too close for comfort, especially during that second half. Uh, yeah. I expect the Yaggies, again, to come out firing tonight. Uh, early, but it's going to be can they keep that momentum going in the second half? we got to keep an eye on that because you don't want to lose to a team of, like FDU here. No offense to them or anything like that, but throw a nine in the conference. I mean, we gotta, we got we to gotta win the games we should win. And that is one of these games here tonight, Delaware Valley and the Devils. Other games tonight, Arcadia and Stevens. DeSales hosting Wilkes and Kings and Misericordia play each other. Kings is in front of Mr. Accordia in the standings. Or Kings is in front of FDU Florham, excuse me, in the standings. The Aggies have already lost a game to Kings at home. They will head up to Wilkes-Barre on Saturday. So if they can get a win here, chance to maybe string some games together. For the Aggies this year, they won four in a row in conference. Then they lost four in a row in conference. Now they're looking to reverse things and go back the other direction. Starting lineups, first for FDU Florham. We'll start with the 6'4 junior forward. From Red Bank, New Jersey, number zero, that is Miles Christian. In the backcourt, the sophomore point guard for the Devils, 5'11", from Staten Island, New York, number three, Gerard Nicholson. Your freshman guard from Phoenix, Arizona, 6'3", number 11, Carson Woods. The 6'2", graduate student, who seems like he's in about his eighth year of college just because he's played as long as he has, number 13, Oliver Ortman. And rounding out the starting lineup for the Devils, the 6'1 sophomore guard from Middletown, New Jersey, number 14, Michael Dabas. Devils are coached by Jeff Slanovic, a graduate of Misericordia, 2012. Now for the Aggies, starting lineup, same lineup they've had for most of the season. You start with the 5'11 senior guard from Solbury, Pennsylvania, Matt Paulus. Next out of the shoot, the 6'0 sophomore guard from West Orange, New Jersey, Godley Mark. The Aggies' leading scorer, the 6'4 graduate student from Germantown, Pennsylvania, number 11, Pernell Gee. Next out, the senior guard from Spring City, Pennsylvania, New York, 5'11, number 21, Nestor Diaz. And rounding out the starting lineup, the 6'1 freshman forward from Philly, number 23, Jordan Gomes. Aggies are coached by Mohamedou Kaba, a graduate of East Stroudsburg University. Coach K in his first season here with the Aggies. Keys to this one, Eric. What do you look for early? Well, like I said again, I want to see the fast start from the Aggies, and I want to see them uh, keep that pressure on the second half. Obviously, that's way down the line from right now. But again, I said on Saturday, and I'm going to say it again. They are a very fast team, Delaware Valley, and they like to play that press coverage right off the bat when uh, they, they play full, full man press court, uh, which leads to lots of turnovers and lots of points for Aggies. And let's see if FDU can stay composed during that full course press. And... Uh, not, not, not do as many turnovers as we saw previously in the women's game. Yeah. <laughs> Hope for a cleaner game here. Delaware Valley won the women's game 58-53. to 
men's action here. It's been, boy, a long time since the Aggies have had a home sweep of a conference playoff game, of conference playoffs. Tip is won by the Devils. Devils in the navy blue with the white stripe and the red, white and red stripe. And we have a stop here because the shot clock isn't moving. That is the longest one second in college basketball. It's easy math because the play clock lost six and the shot clock only lost one. So <laughs> there you go. Yeah, another thing I'm looking to for as well is I want to hope to see Pernell Gee not to get in foul trouble early. It's been a constant theme. Yeah. And we'll see uh, if that starts right away tonight. Devils' Miles Christian kicks out. Three for Carson Woods. Front of the rim, no. Christian's rebound, no. And a traveling violation will be called on Carson Woods, who probably did not expect to have the ball bounce back to his chest like it did. Devils 3-14, and 0-9. Oh that includes the COVID-related results. Aggies 9-7, and 5-4 and four on the season. If you count actual wins on the court, the Aggies are 3-4. and four. Mr. Diaz drives in. Shot is up and good for Nestor Diaz. Senior averaging six points per game. Gets the Aggies started two to nothing. And here's that full court press I was talking about. Let's see what FDU has designed for that end. And again, a play clock, a shot clock issue. Devils have, if there's one bright spot for them, uh, it's been the fact that they've taken care of the ball reasonably well this year. 12 turnovers per game. Their opponents have 12 turnovers per game, so no plus-minus advantage there. They have struggled to score. Where they've really struggled, Eric, is rebounding. They have 30 rebounds per game. That is tough to do. Well, you saw right there early. I mean, they got the offensive rebound. Yeah. But they just They're a tenth of the game. way there after yeah. one possession. <laughs> so... This is the guy to watch, Oliver Ortman. I said half jokingly, it seems like he's in his eighth year. It's because he's always played really, really well here. He is a graduate student, so he's in his fifth year. Ortman is number 13. This is young Carson Woods. I'm going to fight the urge to call him Carson Wentz all night. <laughs> Gerard Nicholson with the ball. Nicholson with Ortman to his left, off for Woods. Freshman from Phoenix, Arizona. Godly Mark comes in. Well, good idea from Mark. The Devils never noticed that the shot clock had wound itself down to zero. So, two possessions, two turnovers for FDU Florham to start this one. Two nothing, Del Val. This is Godly Mark, and yes, it's Godly Mark, not Mark Godly, the sophomore point guard, the junior point guard for Delaware Valley. Transfer from a community college in New Jersey where he averaged 28 points per game last year. Pernell Gee. Bumped and fouled, and they're going to get Michael Dabas for the personal. Purnell got helped out right there because he was a little off balance and a little bit uh, too fast with the handles there. He almost let it right go out, right out of bounds, yeah. but uh, the foul saved him. <laughs> the fans in front of us like it. <laughs> Godly mark to, mark to Matt Paulus for three. That's off the mark, and Carson Woods with the rebound. Woods for Ortman. Waves away Miles Christian. This is Christian now, junior from Red Bank, New Jersey. Not too far from where Florham's based in the northern half of the Garden State. Outside, Woods wants to go down low. Miles Christian, a very small power forward, being covered by Delaware Valley's point guard. Ortman, good switch. Christian shot, no. And Purnell Gee is going to send Christian to the free throw line for two. Yeah, that was a nice cut there by FDU. Uh, led to a nice open basket on Purnell. You know, I was talking about his uh, personal foul troubles, but that was actually a good foul there. You didn't like that one? Easy, didn't, didn't land easy to make him earn it. Florham, an okay shooting free throw team, 68% on the year. The one thing about Florham, they've used a ton of Kais playing odd numbers of games. Five games here, six games there, six games here, which tells you that they've either lost a bunch of guys to injury or something else. The one guy who we had looked forward to saying his name, and this will be the only time we do it all season because I see him at the end of the bench in a boot, is Joseph Nigro, who is the younger brother of Mario's, or of Mario Nigro, who was a really good tailback here at Del Valle for the football team for a couple of years. Stolen away. Devils take the lead on a easy basket for Carson Woods. Four to two, and Mark to Gee 
Gee outside, Paulus for three. No. And tipped back to Matt, and a foul. And again, it's, it's going to be on Gee, I think. Yeah. Two quick fouls. They're going to have to bring in uh, Ibadapo, I believe. It's like he has two fouls as soon as the game starts. I mean, it's like he starts with two fouls. Yeah, again, I like that first foul, but that second foul, I mean, he was nowhere near that rebound, pushed off. Yeah. Just, I understand being aggressive, but there's a thing called being too, too aggressive. FDU with a 4-2 to two lead. Oliver Ortman with the ball here, guarded by Paulus. Devils with Michael Morrissey in the game, freshman center from Pearl River. That's Morrissey right there. And they, that was last touch by Del Val, but okay. <laughs> it was such a bad pass that it didn't matter. I thought Ibadapo touched it, but it was to nobody. And Michael Morrissey buys himself a quick ticket back to the bench. <laughs> it was a 30-second appearance. Diaz for Paulus. Aggies hit their first shot, haven't made one since. Ibadapo with his patented baby hook shot. No, Gomes has the rebound shoot through his hands, and Carson Woods is a rebounding machine. There's another one. Ortman with Ibadapo on him. Slings it along for Dabas. Now for Christian. Good job by Paulus to shut off the backdoor cut. Ortman for three. Yes. Oliver Ortman for three. Devils leading three-point shooter in terms of attempts. 28%, 27% on the season. The Devils on a 7-0 run. They lead 7-2. Paulus for Ibadapo. Thomas gets his man in the air. Shot, no. Tip, no. Off the glass, no. And Florham comes back the other way. 7-2 FDU, Florham. Davis for Christian. And now for Ortman. Ortman with Ibadapo on him. Carson Woods. He's got three rebounds already for Miles Christian. Devils with a turnover. And it seems like uh, Michael Davis did not know where he was exactly standing because he stepped out of bounds there on uh, right near the Delval bench. Checking in now for Delval. The 32. Ryan Black, I believe that was for Ibadapo. Yeah, smaller, a little smaller lineup here. Devils don't have a true forward on the floor. Christian really more of a swing man. Gomes outside. Fans want a three second count. Godly Mark switches hands and lays it up and in. And the sophomore with his first two points of the game, he's got averages 14 on the season. He had the big basket to seal the victory against Mr. Reporty on Saturday. Devils break the full court press from Del, for DelVal. And now give it off for Christian. Ortman who hit the three a moment ago. Outside Nicholson will prod. Easy look for up and good for Miles Christian. That was a nice pass right there. Had the double team he saw and found the open man right underneath the bucket. Francis Robles Montas in for DelVal as is Ryan Black. That's Black right there. For Gomes, Montas, good ball movement. Mark tries to get Ortman in the air. Gomes gets it up and gets it to fall. Jordan Gomes, the freshman from Philly for two. And the Aggies are within three. Carson Woods along the baseline. Ortman hesitates for a moment. New man in for Florham is Aiden Newman, freshman from Oak Ridge, New Jersey. Nicholson loses the ball, gets it back. That's Newman right there. And Newman was standing out of bounds. So 9-6 are our first timeout. It is a full timeout. FDU Florham will take it. 14-27 to play here in the first half. Aggies' next two games after this one. On the road at King's College on Saturday. It's another game that if you want to host in the playoffs, you got to win that one. The Aggies dropped the first game of the season, or the first home game of the season in December to 
Kings. And the Aggies return for Arcadia. So these are all teams that, on paper, Delaware Valley should... I wouldn't say they should beat them. Delaware Valley's not the type of program that would have a significant advantage on any of these teams. But they're not, they're not the top three teams in the conference who have clearly separated themselves from the pack. Stevens, Lycoming, and DeSales. Delaware Valley back out onto the floor. Devils with a new man out there. In the timeout, they brought in freshman 5'11 guard from Randolph, New Jersey, Jamal Santana. And they got one other new guy out there, number five, Nicola Mitterotunda. Ibadapo, nice move, can't finish. Mark, or excuse me, Robles Montas gets his hands on it, but unable to tip it home. Ibadapo is liking that matchup. I think he's got the height advantage. Just unfortunately, he's missed two uh, close yeah. looks. He likes that look. shot, but does not make it at a high percentage. Carson Woods, no. And Robles Montas tips it to Godly Mark. Mark down the floor for Paulus. Robles Montas for three, no. And the rebound controlled by Santana. 9-6, going to get a couple of subs in for DelVal at the next dead ball. Santana, offense is stuck on 9-6 here for a little while. Freshman Aiden Newman, who's a 36% three-point shooter for Santana. Now for Christian. Christian on Ibadapo outside Woods, head fake. Drives in and hands it to the wrong team. Paulus with the steal. Tries to get the foul called, but nothing there. Godly Mark, well, good look from Mark. Ibadapo is out of bounds, or traveled, or both. It's a good look for Mark. He, so too quick for his own big man. Checking into the game, Gomes and Diaz. Also first action of the night for a guy who played really well on Saturday, Edward Jones. Jones with a season-high 12 points, three assists, and three rebounds against the Cougars here on Saturday afternoon. That's Jones number one right there. Woods over the timeline for Nicholson still stuck on 9-6 Santana Christian trying to front on Edward Jones shot clock down to 8 Woods for Christian shot clock down to 5 Christian with his drive 2 seconds 1 puts it up shot no and Jordan Gomes had to go out of bounds off of his head so that will reset the shot clock Jones played about as great defense you can ask right there. Unfortunately, Aggies just couldn't come up with the rebound. And is it just me or is the Edward Jones giving me that Tobias Harris vibe? Yeah, he's got different look, different look tonight. He's got the uh, armband, got the same facial kind of hair as Tobias. You get the leg socks, yeah. Got the leg socks, yeah. He's Wide open Santana for three. No, and a rebound by Robles Montas. 9-6 forever, it seems. Gomes. In the lane, nice move on Christian, and it will fall. Second basket of the game for Jordan Gomes. Aggies down by one. Nicholson for Woods. Extended break here for Oliver Ortman for FDU Florham, who's their leading scorer and rebounder. Aiden Newman for three, all alone, and that is good. Newman a good three-point shooter, 36% on the season. Averaging six points per game. Robles Montas tries to answer, and he does. Francis Robles Montas for three. He's a 33% three-point shooter. And Jones with the foul there. Third on Delaware Valley. First really, on Jones. I'm really impressed with FDU so far, how they are handling the uh, full court press. Uh, very quick passes, not panicking at all, and... Hasn't led to a turnover yet. We saw with Miss Cordy, they struggled early in the game. A couple 10-second violations, a couple turnovers, and FDU is just the complete opposite. Very poised, and I don't think a single turnover so far if that's full court press. Yeah, and uh, we said that Florham struggles to rebound the, so far this year, tonight. They're out-rebounding Delaware Valley 8-3. to three. Santana over for Ortman, who's returned. His team up one. 
Lever Ortman backdoor cut. Little miscommunication with Miles Christian. That's a turnover. Robles Montas will check out. First action of the game for the freshman guard from Philadelphia, St. Joe's Prep. Six foot one, number 12, Richard Thomas. This is Thomas right here. Thomas is averaging one point per game. Aggies won the first game between these two teams, 83-67 in New Jersey. Gomes, tough, forces up the shot. Morrissey has returned for Florham. And that's the freshman from Pearl River, New York, grabbing the rebound there. And that's Gomes committing a foul. Yeah, one player uh, on FDU, you gotta, you got to keep an eye out. Obviously, is Oliver Wartman finished with a double-double last time they played the Aggies. 18 points, 11 rebounds. So far, they've kept him in check, and uh, that's going to be the key here. Yeah, two guys who have always played well against Del Val are both here. Oliver Ortman is one of them. Anthony Florentin is the other. Florentin, though, is an assistant coach now, so he can't hurt him on the court, at least. Whoops, Santana loses it. Diaz does the same. Pass to an open. Richard Thomas, though, for two. Good job by Thomas to run the floor, and the Aggies with their first lead since it was 2 to nothing. It's 13-12, to 12, Del Val. Santana for Morrissey. Ortman guarded by Diaz. Jones goes for the steal. Santana into the lane. Morrissey layup is good. Michael Morrissey averages two points per game. A film major, which is an unusual major. Richard Thomas for Matt Paulus. Diaz picked up by the bigger Morrissey. Paulus for three. Yes. Matt Paulus. With the triple and a timeout for Coach K. Aggies back in front. It's Delaware Valley 16 and FDU 14. Get you a look at the other scores tonight. Wilkes with a very early lead on DeSales, just starting in Center Valley, just north of here. Wilkes 6, DeSales 5. Stevens Institute of Technology looking to stay hot. The Ducks on top of Arcadia, 14 to seven in a very low scoring first 10 minutes in Hoboken, New Jersey. And the other game tonight, I don't think it's tipped off yet. It will be Kings and Mr. Recordia. Yep, they are underway. It's 5-2 Mr. Recordia in that one. Right here, Aggies with a 16-14 lead as Matt Paulus it's the second three of the night for Delaware Valley. Aggies two for three from behind the arc. FD Florham, coached by Jeff Slanovic, a graduate of Misericordia back in 2012. He won a couple of conference titles under Dave Martin, who's now the athletic director at Scranton, but was the longtime head coach at Misericordia. Slanovic was an assistant coach under George Petrie for four seasons at Gettysburg. And he was a coach of the year the last time they handed out that award in the conference. The Devils were picked last in the 2019-2020 season and finished in fourth place. Made the conference playoffs. And the Devils have to call timeout because they're about to have a five-second count there. So burning through those timeouts early. 30-second <laughs> timeout for Florham. Aggies head coach, Mohamedou Kaba, or Coach K for short. Graduate of East Stroudsburg University, Division II school in the Pocono Mountains. Had a lot of success with the Warriors. His four years as an assistant coach there, they won two Division II titles. In the Penn State Athletic Conference went to the Division II tournament twice. A lot of crossover between that conference and this one in the Division III level, the Aggies Two head coaches ago, Casey Stitzel now the head coach at Millersville, another team in that conference. Generally see a lot of transfers between from the D2 programs down to the D3 programs. Santana 
into the hands of Dabas, who's checked back out. It's Dabas, Ortman, Morrissey, Santana, and Newman, who's got one point on the floor he really likes, right in that near side corner. Santana drives, leans, shot, no, follow, Morrissey, yes. Michael Morrissey, four points, two rebounds on the offensive side early on, and we're tied at 16 again. Now, so much for that idea that Florham struggles to rebound. Yeah, if you're, uh, if you're an Aggies fan, you got to start getting that under control. Three rebounds for the Aggies, ten for FDU. And turnover by Delaware Valley will give the ball back to Fairley Dickinson. That's what, in case you were curious, that's what the FDU stands for. Two, two branch campuses, a private school in New Jersey, F, uh, Fairley Dickinson University, Teaneck is the Division I program. Those are the, they're the Knights. And the Devils, a D3 program. Sixteen, sixteen. Santana. Devils have handled the press well here so far. Under nine minutes to play in the first half. Tied at 16. Ortman open. Hangs. Shot blocked by Black. And then I think they're going to get the... Uh, oh, no. They're going to get a jump ball. Possession now in favor of Delaware Valley. No, possession arrow in favor of Delaware Valley. There we go. <laughs> Salandovic is one of the more entertaining coaches in the conference. He's very, very animated. I was going to say, he is, old, he is hot early. He, he is mean. very animated. <laughs> Their last coach, Peter Marion, was also very, very animated. So they've, they've had entertaining, energetic coaches now for a while. Matt Paulus over for Ryan Black. Black wants to go down low for Diaz. There's Pernell Gee who's come back out with two fouls. And that was not a good return. Stripped away. Florham with the ball. Santana down the floor. Jamal for Michael Morrissey. And Pernell Gee's on a center there, so that's an odd matchup. Ortman defended well by Paulus. He does a good job to get in the passing lane on Morrissey. Shot clock down to nine. Ortman picked up by Gee. Oliver hangs and hits. Oliver Ortman averages 16, 15 points per game, seven rebounds, three assists. Those are all team highs. He's got five so far tonight. His team's up two. So it looks like they have Gee playing the center position, which is definitely going to be a mismatch on the defensive end. But on the offensive end, let's see maybe if he can use his quick feet and uh, get some easy layups, but unfortunately there he just settles for the jumper and uh, does not convert. And another slow start for Purnell. Aggies down by two. 7.29 to play. Portman works off a screen. Nice job by Gee to pick it up. Newman ricochets off of Ryan Black. Backdoor cut, and great job by Diaz to break that up. Godly mark for Matt Paulus. Paulus' shot is blocked, and it ends up barely drawing iron. Maggie's finally had a chance to get out in transition, but thwarted by Michael Dabas, who blocked that. Ortman off the screen. This is Dabas. Let's go down on for Morrissey. Paulus loses his footing, and Morrissey had him beat anyway. Yeah, 20 Paulus, to 16. Paulus the you know, the known shooting guard, uh, only five foot eleven. Obviously, it's a major disadvantage. And Pernell Gee with the three here, and Pernell Gee drops it home. Thirty-one percent three-point shooter on the season. Aggies shoot thirty-three percent as a team. Delaware Valley down by one. Diaz. Devils going to get four fresh bodies out there at the next dead ball. Davis drives in. Good grief. Okay, that was an extremely hard foul by Diaz. Not a clear path foul, but Diaz did not get cheated. We'll say that. It's Diaz's first. Dabas, understandably, a little slow to get up from that. And we'll get all those fresh bodies out here after Michael takes his first free throw. And the first one's no good. Dabas on the season, a 70% free throw shooter. Devils as a team shoot 68%. Okay, so here's all the fresh bodies for you. Let's start with Del Val. Jordan Gomes, Edward Jones, and Francis Robles Montas return. Diaz, Paulus, and Guy all to the bench. Devils have 
just one guy still out there who was out there a moment ago, and it's the free throw shooter, Dabas. Carson Woods, Miles Christian, uh, Gerard Nicholson, and a new guy, that's Derek Whitaker out there for the Devils, and that's Derek Whitaker with the steal, junior from South uh, River, New Jersey. So a chance for DelVal to make some hay against what is basically the Devils' second team, or a mix of them. Well, not anymore. Here comes Orton. He's hobbling to the bench, too. He's still feeling from that foul, that hard, that hard fall. We'll see how that affects him later on down the game as well, if he's able to make a return. Yeah, he was. he hit the floor really hard. Jeff saw something he wanted. I don't know what it was, but he's leaping and high five in the air and all kinds of stuff over there on the floor and sideline. Pull up for Ortman. Whoops. Off the mark. Aggie's still down one. Mark for Robles Montas, who thinks three. Jones for Mark. 20 on the clock. Godly Mark for Jordan Gomes. Playing a little inside out here with the forwards on the outside behind the perimeter. Jordan Gomes for three. No. Gomes on the season is, well, he's not a terrible three-point shooter. 27%. And once again, we're frozen in time on another score. This time, 2019. Ortman wants to go down low. Instead, he goes to Whitaker at the wing. Christian gives it for Whitaker. Whitaker backing it on Jones. Christian fakes on the three. Off balance runner. No rebound. Godly Mark. Good defense for DelVal on that possession. Mark with his the whole team on his skates, but he throws the ball away. And Ortman says, let's slow it down. Aggie's got to slow things down, I think, as well. They're playing very sloppy this first half. And uh, you know, I thought they I expected them to come out fast, and it's been actually the complete opposite. Gerard Nicholson's shot will not rattle home. Gomes with the rebound. Aggies down by one, 4.33 to play. Slow start for the Aggies' top two players. Mark has two points. Guy has none. Robles Montas for three. No. And the Aggies like to shoot early in the shot clock. Let's put it that way. Ortman. For Whitaker. Miles Christian backs his way down. Ortman for three. No. And Robles Montas, another uncontested rebound. Mark takes the ball. Aggies down by one. Black will try a three. No. And the Aggies, when things go badly for them on offense, Eric, it's just all quick threes yeah. and not falling. Yeah, and unfortunately, uh, that's the way the game's honestly changing. You see that in the NBA especially, just a lot of three points. And, uh, you know, I guess Aggies are trying to replicate that. And it's not going the right now. It's not – nothing's falling for them. I mean, both sides, honestly, nothing's really no, falling. It's, <laughs> it's very much a stalemate, and it's just very sloppy offense on both ends of the floor. A stalemate's a good way to describe it. Ewan's Lazima into the game for DelVal, number 25. Nicholson for Woods. Woods gets by Ibadapo. Shot will fall for Carson Woods. First four, two points of the night for Woods. Ibadapo is team down three. Lazima off the screen for Diaz. Ibadapo for Matt Paulus. Gomes was rot wide. Yeah, he was. Ibadapo is a low percentage shot for him. No good, and Lazima gets called for pushing off. And another possession with really out any strategy there. There's no way you're drawing up a possession so your center can take a long-range jumper. 22-19. Aggies have not played well here. No, no, they have not. That is... I think that would be a little bit of an understatement. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Nicholson for Woods. Woods for Nicholson. Ibadapo making sure Christian can't get the ball. The Zima falls over. Christian slings the line. It tipped by Diaz, but two Woods. Woods drives in. Hangs. 
Didn't get the shot, but he gets Ibadapo in the air. And crafty move by the freshman on the graduate student. And Carson Woods heads at a free throw line where he is 71% on the season. Luckily for the Aggies, there's no need to panic. You're only down by three. I mean, it seems like they should be down by a lot more. Yep. But, you know, again, Purnell, two early fouls, had to sit up most of the half, first half. Uh, Golly Mark hasn't really got anything going. At Pulse, I think, only has hit one three. So it's not the end of the world. You know, hopefully they can, you know, start getting the shots to fall. But you know, they got they got to wake up. Yeah, they got to <laughs> wake up for, for sure. They're being out-rebounded by 10 by the worst rebounding team in the conference. Florham has 30 rebounds per game. They're approaching that at the half. <laughs> well, they've got 17, so. Diaz weaves his way inside. Shot, no. Two Aggies run into each other. And then Ibadapo wipes out on the baseline. So it's a 5 on 4 break here. Santana, well, no break anymore. 23-19. Paulus, good defense. Slides into the lane. Ball knocked away, but Florham retains possession. Nicholson for Woods. Miles Christian will go back door, and Paula saw it and took it away. Four on one break for the Aggies. Gomes hangs, shot, got it, count it, going to the line. There we go, that's what they needed. Jordan Gomes with the bucket. That is gives him six on the night, and the Aggies have a chance to get this down to a one-point deficit. Foul on Florence, Jamal Santana. This is just the second foul period on Florham. Ibadapo checks out. Robles Montas back in. Yeah, nobody's really had a chance to foul. It's just everybody's just jacking up threes or turnovers. I mean, it's low, to, uh, you know, low percentage shots and no need to foul. And unfortunately, cannot make the end one for Jordan Gomes. Aggies trailed by two, 23-21. Woods on the backdoor cut. Nicholson finds it. Nicholson uh, couldn't quite get it, but he's fouled. And we'll get to the free throw line. That was a back, uh, nice backdoor cut there, which allowed him to be able to get under the rim and ultimately lead to a foul and let him shoot two at the line. Nicholson hits the first free throw. He's the only one of two players on the team who's played in every single game this year. Ortman missed a handful. Michael Dobbis missed one. Second free throw, no good. Tipped off the backboard, and Diaz controls. So Devils get one to two. They're back up by three. Robles Montas for Godly Mark. Diaz for Paulus. Paulus push shot from the foul line, no good. Jordan Gomes tips it and then swats it beyond his own teammate's legs. Three on one break. Nichols, well, good good defense there for at least a moment. Woods outside, Nicholson for three, and that's off the mark. So Aggies dodge a bullet there. Great recovery on defense by Robles Montas to save that one. Robles Montas, tough shot, no good. Looking for a foul, no call there. Devils with the ball, 28 seconds on the shot clock, 41 on the game. Ortman tries to lose Paulus. Hangs, shot, no. Robles Montas, another rebound. And with that, FDU is going to be able to get a two for one here. So Delval is going to try to eat as much clock as possible, leaving no time for FDU to get a good shot for the last possession of the half. Montas with four rebounds. His season high is eight against Kings. Nine on the shot clock. Paulus drives in, and that shot is blocked. Carson Woods with the rejection. Three-point Florham lead. Woods weaves his way around the defender. Shot no good. And that is the way the first half will come to an end. Not a good performance for Delaware Valley in the first half. They trail the last place winless FDU Florham Devils 24-21 at the break. Thoughts on that first half other than Icky? Yeah, Icky is a good word for that. <laughs> um, it seemed like Aggies were just trying to just do too much, like, they weren't using any teamwork there. It seems like everything was trying. Everybody was trying to do something just themselves. Yeah. Either jacking up a three, or you saw there at the very end, the last shot there was just you know holding the ball for too long and just trying to make something happen. And 
it got blocked. And yeah. again, like I said, it's only a three point game. You know, your your best players haven't really showed up yet, so hopefully they can get that together in the second half. But I mean, they, you can't keep playing around with again. These are the games you should win, and if you keep playing around these games, you should win. It might turn the losses. Well, we'll turn to a break. We'll be back in about 10 minutes. We'll get you an update from around the Middle Atlantic Freedom Conference scoreboard. At the half, it's Delaware Valley trailing FDU Florham 24-21.
Welcome back. Let's get you some first half scores before we go to the statistics. Looking around the Freedom Conference, well, there's some strange scores at the half. Wilkes University, which is, excuse me, near the bottom of the conference, is leading to sales at the half. That's a surprise. The score, an even bigger surprise. Wilkes is up 25 to 16. The sales has 16 points in the first half. Last week, the sales scored 98 points against Delaware Valley. So quite a drop-off there for the Bulldogs in this uh, in this first half. Up in, uh, And they're at home in that one. Well, this was the type of score. This next one is the type of score you were hoping for here for Delaware Valley. And it's between the team around Delaware Valley spot in the standings and around Florham's spot in the standings. Mr. Ricordi is leading Kings 55-25. to 25. Now, I wasn't quite expecting a 30-point lead at the break. Uh, wasn't expecting a three-point deficit either. So Mr. Cordia doing a good job taking care of business against the Monarchs, who are in eighth place in the conference. Stevens and Arcadia figured on paper to be the closest game of the night, and it is at the moment. It's Stevens 31, Arcadia 30. They are at the half. And right here, 24 to 21. Anything that stands out to you other than those first-half numbers, Eric? Yeah, first-half numbers. Uh, I'm looking around here. Like you were saying, all game, uh, Devils come in, worst rebounding team, and they're leading the rebound category, uh, 21 to 13. So Aggie's got to get that going. Uh, also, uh, six or five assists to seven turnovers for the Aggies. So not terrible, minus two, but there's no assists. Yeah. Only five <laughs> assists. I mean, that's not. That's there's not. We need we need more passing, need more buckets, obviously. And for uh, the Devils, they have six assists, 11 11 turnovers. Individual standouts for you in that first half. Mr. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Cordia. FDU Florham, balanced scoring and low scoring for both teams. We only have 44 points or 45 points at the half. Mike Morrissey was six points, five minutes, very efficient. Three of four from the floor, two rebounds, and one steal in, again, only a little under five minutes of action. Oliver Ortman with five points. Carson Woods with five points. Four for Miles Christian. And three for Aiden Newman on 1-3. And a single free throw for Gerard Nicholson. Devils leading rebounder in that first half was Carson Woods. He had five. For Delaware Valley, same story. Balance scoring without much of it. Uh, Jordan Gomes with six points in the first half on 15 minutes. Three of five from the floor. 0 for 1 from the three-point line. 0 for 1 from the foul line. He did have a rebound in 15 minutes of action. Other scores for Delaware Valley. Everyone else has one basket each. Pernell Gee has three, Robles Montas has three, Richard Thomas has two, Godley Mark has two, and Nestor Diaz has two. Leading rebounder for Delaware Valley in that first half was Francis Robles Montas. He had four. So Aggies with a half to turn it around here. Again, what's on the line for Delaware Valley is they've got a string of games here in a row where they've, if, if they aren't the favorite, they are uh, at least have a good chance to win and build up a bit of a streak and give themselves a chance they're in, depending on how you look at the standings, fifth or somewhere between fourth and sixth. Fourth place will get you a home game. Fifth and sixth will not. Carson Woods, Miles Christian. Woods loses the handle. Gerard Nicholson, Oliver Ortman, and Jamal Santana, the five out there. Michael Dabas has not returned since he hit the floor very hard. He would have been the fifth starter. Pernell Gee, Godley Mark, Matt Paulus, Jordan Gomes, and Nestor Diaz, the starting five on the floor for Delaware Valley. Gomes on the undersized Christian, gets him in the air, misses. Zone rebound. Got free throws coming. Couldn't quite get it to drop. But good aggressive first take there from Jordan Gomes. And Gomes with the lone bright spot on offense in the first half. Yeah, and if I'm Coach K, uh Obviously, you need a new game plan going into the second half because 21 points does not does not cut it for one half. So, not unless you're playing DeSales, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm interested to see. And uh, there's only one possession for each team so far. I'm interested to see the the adjustments he made at half. Uh, you know, obviously a turnover for FDU, the the first possession, so that's good for Aggies and uh, free throws, which you did not see. I think you only saw one free throw. Oh my throw. goodness! Yeah, and and Gomes nearly airballed it, but. Diaz got the ball, so, so Aggies maintain possession after Gomes misses his second and third free throw of the night. Godly Mark, that was 
Looked like a travel to me, but didn't make the shot anyway. And here comes Florin back the other way. Santana. Miles Christian for Carson Woods. Guarded closely by Gomes, now Santana. Miles Christian guarded by Gee. Outside, Woods thinking about a three, eight on the shot clock. Off the screen, Gee picks him up and picks it off. Three on two break, and I don't know what Purnell was doing there. I don't know. Uh, well, the number of fast breaks that Delaware Valley turns into not even no points, but often no shots is unfathomable in college basketball. Here's what I'm thinking right now. If I'm Purnell Gee, oh, I got a steal. This is great. This is great. I'm going to go for the dunk, and oh, there goes the ball. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. 24 21. It's not an isolated incident for Delaware Valley. About half of their fast breaks end that way. Christian hands it off for Santana. And that's off the right leg of Gee, and we'll reset the shot clock at 20 seconds. Santana inbounds for Christian. Once again, we're frozen in time on a score. This time, 24-21. Minute and a half gone. No score change here in the second half. Good defense from Mark on Ortman. Newman, and that's stolen by Mark. And Mark, uncontested layup for two. 24-23, see if that gets Mark going. He's got four points. Ortman will bring the ball up. He's been fairly quiet here. He's got five points. Devils leading score, rebounder, and assist man. I think that's what's keeping Aggies in the game, keeping yeah. Ortman quiet. True. So they've done a good job defensively on Ortman. Newsom. And he had Ortman wide open. He's going to go out for Santana for three. That's tipped off the ground. Gee battles through the defense and gets the rebound. Aggies looking to retake the lead here. Mark bumped. Maintains body control. Diaz off for Mark. 19 on the shot clock. Diaz for Gomes Gomes tough take no got his own rebound leg sweep and a foul coming here on the Devils we'll get Michael Morrissey back into the game I don't think that was a shooting foul no so it looks like they're just trying to feed Gomes yeah, the pain. Now you obviously see after you already make yeah. that change bringing in their big man Make yeah so that the Delaware Valley is trying to take advantage of the size on Miles Miles Christian. Christian goes to the bench with two fouls, both of them in this half. Diaz, head fakes. Outside for Mark. Mark for three. No. Rebound. Gomes all by himself. Has it. Off glass for two. Jordan Gomes. Eight points. Aggies with their first lead in a while. It's 25-24. Ortman, boy, wide open. Newman for three. Yes. Yep, that's what that full course prep will do. Sometimes leave the wings wide open, and unfortunately uh, left the wrong guy open. Yeah. Newman, two baskets, both threes. He's got six. Devils back up by two. Mark wants to feed it down low to Gee. Gee to Paulus. Paulus for three. No. And out of bounds. Ryan Black will check in for Del Val. He'll give Matt Paulus a break. Francis Robles Montas returns for Delaware Valley. Got a productive first half in terms of rebounding. Gomes goes to the bench, hopefully not for very long, because he is all of their offense right now. He's got a third of their points. Morrissey outside. Santana thinks three. Devils are reset. And again, Aiden Newman was wide up yeah, there. Yeah, he same was spot. all by himself. Santana. Slips it in. Nope. Stolen away by Gee. Up ahead for Mark. Mark for Diaz. And hey, it's another fast break without a shot. <laughs> Bernal Gee outside. Mark for Diaz. Robles Montas does not want to shoot an open three for some reason. And the Aggies reset. Drive in. Shot is blocked. And the Aggies just have some sort of allergic reaction to fast breaks. 27-25. Ortman hangs, hit, oh, misses badly. 
Robles Montas with the rebound. The frustrating thing, Eric, is that's what Delaware Valley wants to do. That's what all this pressing is for. It's yep. to get you out in fast breaks yep. so they can do what? Not even take shots? And they're usually, they, again, Saturday they were very good in the fast break. And all season, what I've watched, they've been very good in the fast break. And tonight is just the complete opposite. And Pernell Gay's going to hit that jumper. Quick pick and pop there for Gee. Aggies get this even at 27. 15 19 to play. So it looks like from the adjustments, it looks like they're really trying to work that uh, that paint area. Yep. Um, obviously, you got the uh, the bigger man in there now. I'm trying to see. Michael Morrissey. Like, yep, yeah. yep. Looks like they're going to have him now to counter that, that adjustment. But uh, again, if you put Nell Gee down there, I, I would think he's probably a little bit quicker than Morrissey on his feet. Yeah. Just be able to drive by him. And you saw that on Saturday, too. Pernell Gee made two really quick layups because he was just faster than right, the guy, the Nick guy that Prochak. was guarding him. Yeah. So I'm surprised Gee's not driving more or head faking more instead of just settling for jump shots. But if he's going to hit him, then I guess that's all right. But, again, two quick fouls early in the first half. I mean, you didn't get to see much of it. So No. <laughs> Gee with five points after that basket. Mark has four. Jordan Gomes leads DelVal with eight. Aiden Newman now, who's got two threes, has six. The Devils have the bench scoring advantage, 12 to five. And their starters have gone quiet here. So Florham to inbound. It'll be Oliver Ortman, Gerard Nicholson, Jamal Santana, Michael Morrissey, and Aiden Newman. Miles Christian on the bench with two fouls. Michael Dobbis on the bench. He got hurt in the first half. Yeah, and he's got an, I believe he's got, an, uh, he's got a wrap on his leg yeah, and also a nice pack as well. So it looks like he might done. be done for the night. Nicholson off the screen for Ortman, who's guarded by Black. Morrissey calling for the ball on the much smaller Francis Robles Montas. Ortman drives, hangs, and hits, and got it. And a so it's late, gonna be an and one too as well. Yeah, a late foul there on Ryan Black, who got him from behind. So Ortman with a three-point play opportunity. Extend the Devils lead. Jamal Santana to the bench. Aiden Newman returns. And Ortman unable to hit the free throw. The 70% free throw shooter. Aggies down by two. Jones drives and a foul on Newman. Third on the Devils, first on Aiden. Aiden and Newman was a little bit late there and didn't get his feet set, and which is why the blocking foul was called. Jones for Gee. Turn, shot, no. Michael Morrissey with the rebound. Cornell just can't find the range tonight. Two for four. Yeah, if I'm Coach Carey, now I'm telling him, drive to that paint. Just, just drive to that paint. Ryan Black holding on for dear life picks up the foul. And that's what you're going to see. You see defense, you see offensively for DelVal, it might be in favor for them, allowing the quicker, yeah. quicker guards against him. But once you're on defense... Nobody can, really, nobody can stop him. Jordan Gomes will try. Matt Paulus, Nestor Diaz, and Godly Mark all return as well. Robles Montas, the lone player who remains on the floor. Devils by two. Newman for Ortman. Rick Nicholson off the screen. Morrissey sitting on Robles Montas, yep. like, using him like a, like a stool. Ortman. Kicks out, open three for Nicholson, no. And Gomes with the rebound. Aggie's still down two. Godly Mark. Hands it off for Paulus. Gomes. Directing traffic, 17 on the shot clock. That kicks off the foot of Carson Woods out of bounds. Great idea, unfortunately. Uh, it's a lot of feet to throw it between. Yeah. Was, uh, quick enough to react to that. 
And it looks like Ibadapo is going to come here to try to give us some size. Yeah, on Morrissey, if nothing else. Yeah. Newman checks out. Jamal Santana back in. Morrissey and Newman have 12 points between the two of them. And Ibadapo can be a huge part of this game plan tonight again. Like, I think the problem is it's just his his offensive touch just isn't there. Yeah. And if it is, he, he's a starter every night. Gomes drives in. Hang, shot, got it. Jordan Gomes, the first to double digits for DelVal. He's got 10, and we're tied at 29 again. 13.30 to play. First time these two teams met, Gomes had 8.6 rebounds. Again, that was a 16-point win for DelVal in, in Madison, New Jersey, back in December. And Ibadapo is covering Ortman on this possession for some... Yeah, that, that's not by design. <laughs> Six on the shot clock, Morrissey, and he traveled. Yep. So good defense there. Mismatches, but they worked. Yeah, Ibadapo picked up Ortman at half court. I'm not too sure what that was. So <laughs> a if, mistake. If that's if that's the game plan, I'm a little worried for Aggies. <laughs> Delaware Valley once again looking for the lead. They've had it only very briefly, two to nothing. They had a one point lead twice, and that's it. Devils have led for the most part, though not by very much. Gomes goes to work on Ortman. Shot is no good. Morrissey pulls down the rebound. Carson Woods down the floor. Nobody really running with him, so he'll pull it back out. Ortman for Santana. Again, Thomas out there on the three-point line as well. Ortman with the shot clock down to nine, works off the screen. Diaz as Ortman shoots, no good, and boy, Oliver's really struggling here tonight. Diaz with the rebound. Godly Mark, pro steps in the lane and passes to nobody. Jamal Santana with the takeaway. Mark's got to understand his teammates better than that. Thomas Ibadapo is not doing anything with the ball on that play, even if you get it to him. Ortman. Outside, wide open three. No, air ball. Morrissey. Make that a really good pass to Michael Morrissey. He's got eight. And it's back to a two-point floor and lead. Diaz for Gomes. Gomes drives in. Off glass and good. Jordan Gomes with 12. And the Aggies get it tied again. Season high for Jordan this year is 16 against Gwynedd Mercy about 10 days ago. And a timeout by Jeff Slanovic, who wants to bring five new guys or four new guys on the floor. Aggies shooting 36%, Devils shooting 39%. Aggies and Devils both three for 10 from the, uh, from the arc. Aggies are 0 for three from the foul line. All three of them from Jordan Gomes. Devils not exactly... Uh, setting the world on fire. They're four for nine from there. I was going to say, if you look at defensive battle, then you got yourself the game, but I don't even know if I would call this a defensive battle. This is just yeah. more... <laughs> An unoffensive battle. <laughs> yeah, both teams are just making the their own mistakes. Yeah. Just very sloppy basketball from both teams, both ways around. I, it's going to come down to who, who wakes up first, unfortunately, this yeah. for this game. And, F, and for FDU, that's probably the best thing you could wish for is who's going to wake up first. Yeah, you, you want to hang in the game. You've had games so many this year, including on Saturday, when they're playing Wilkes, who again is 5-7. and seven. Wilkes is not, you know, not a, a real strong opponent this year, the score against the Sales tonight notwithstanding. Wilkes beat FDU Florham by like 27 at, at FDU Florham, so... Florham has had a lot of games like that this year, including the first one against Del Val, which is not particularly close. It is uh, Wilkes is still leading against the Sales, twenty-seven to twenty. Maybe we were wrong about Wilkes, their second-half team. <laughs> well, the Sales with twenty points, twenty-five minutes into the game, is very weird. Thirty-one apiece here. Not that we're threatening any scoring records. Newsom. Gets it down for Morrissey. Morrissey with the smaller Paulus on him. Rocks him to sleep. Couldn't hit the shot. But a nice move there by Michael yeah, Morrissey. Yeah, FDU will take that all game. Gomes. 
can't, I don't know how that doesn't go down. Nor is Gomes. He's looking up at the rim like, how did that just happen? <laughs> but it will be free throws for Gomes. See if he can make one here. It's 0 for 3 so far. First foul on Michael Morrissey. Fourth on the Devils, so no foul trouble of note for either team, including Guy at this point. He had two quick ones, but nothing since. And Jordan Gomes with another near air ball from the foul line. I don't know what's going on here, but Jordan's going to take a step back and try and collect himself. And he's usually a he's decent a, he's free a decent throw. free throw yeah. shooter, right? He's not he's not this. There he goes. Makes the adjustment, hits it. Another one-point lead for Del Val. The largest their lead has been is two, and that was when it was two nothing. Ewan's Lizima back out there for Delaware Valley, number 25. Ortman for Santana. Not at the halfway point or approaching it of the second half. Morrissey on Paulus. Pernell Gee reaches out and pokes it away. One thing the Devils have done really well, they've done a, they've switched really well and continually get their center on a point guard. Yeah, they do. They do. It's the second time now Paulus and back-to-back possessions have been on him. Newman. Four on the shot clock. Oh, that was tough call. Although Gomes does not. Yeah, Gomes says I got him. So no, never mind. <laughs> Second foul on Jordan Gomes. Aiden Newman quickly to the free throw line. Very eager free throw shooter. Hits the first. Yeah, this is the reason why he's eight for eight on the season. He likes this spot. He's got seven points, and he and Morrissey have been the difference between. This game being tied and not. And Newman splashes them both home. So back to a one-point FDU Florham lead. 33-32, 10-20 to play. All right, Keaton, I'll drive to the paint. No. <laughs> what on earth was that? Well, he thought about it. Or he it's, like he, it's like he bumped the jump button or something. He heard me, but he was in the middle of uh, shooting, and he's like... <laughs> no, you got to let go of the button to shoot the ball. 33-32. <laughs> Santana has it poked away and stolen. And Lazima for two. Big play by Ewan's Lazima there to get the Aggies again back in front by one. And the football team getting into it now. First time there's some crowd noise. Ortman looks to silence him. No. Morrissey with the rebound stripped away. It's a four on two break. Gomes switches hands and scores. And that's the type of Del Bell Aggies basketball that we're used to. Crowd into it. First three point lead of the night for Delaware Valley. Generated mostly by Ewan's Lazima on the last two possessions. 36 33. Ortman. For Carson Woods, Morrissey sets the screen. Good pickup from Gomes. Stolen away. Paulus. Yes. And the Devils struggling to get the ball inbounds here. I think they're starting to feel the uh, pressure from the crowd now. Yep. Six straight for Del Val. They lead by five. Ortman in trouble. What happened? <laughs> I can't hear. Ball was out of bounds, tipped out of bounds by the Aggies, it looked like. Okay. It's going to be still FDU ball. They they were... They, they, they reacted were like, like it was a turnover. They so. it's about It was about a half a second from a 10-second violation. Yeah. I mean, it was super close. But, yeah, this is exactly... This is what we should have been expecting all game. Just, you know, full court press and then causing the turnovers... Fast break points. I mean, we, we saw fast break opportunities in the first half, but just not, they weren't even shooting the ball. I mean, they they would just stop and then take yeah. it out and then shoot a three or try to make something happen by themselves. It was nothing. It's com this last minute has been a completely different team. The uh, scores, the scorers, the statistics, I'll find the right word eventually, says there's a foul on Nestor Diaz on the play. Is there? Okay. Yeah. I knew it was definitely out on the Aggies. I just couldn't yep. hear if there was a foul or a whistle or anything like that. So, 
it's a loud, it's a little gym, and it gets loud. It could get loud in a hurry, which is nice for the home court advantage. 38-33. Florham calls the timeout. Largest advantage for I think either team. I don't know that Florham is led by more than that. And if you're a Devils fan here, this is where this is pretty much where the game's going to get decided. Are you able to silence this crowd, bring this game back, even just to a two, three point game? Right. But if it if they miss here and uh, and Aggies get a fast bucket, it could get out of hand real fast. Oliver Ortman will inbound. It'll be Ortman, Miles, Christian who's returned. Carson Woods, Gerard Nicholson, and Aiden Newman. So four starters plus Newman. Again, Davis, the fifth starter, was hurt in the first half. Slanovic wanted something and didn't get it. Ortman was wide open, wide open underneath the basket. That's what he was looking for. Ortman off the screen from Miles Christian. Carson Woods. Paulus for Newman. Ortman, Ortman for three. No, rattles out, and Nestor Diaz with the rebound. Ewan's Lazima will come back to get the ball, and Ewan's will run point guard for the Aggies. Coach Caba frustrated with him. Hollis wants to go to Purnell, nothing there. Jordan Gomes has been the Aggies' offensive leader. Bounce pass, bad idea. Ricochets off a couple of feet. Gomes is frustrated with the cut, but it doesn't matter. He's not getting the ball there because there's about 24 legs in between where he is and where he wants the ball to be. 38-33. And let's see if they bring Gomes back into that paint area and just let him work. I mean, yeah. that's what they did in the beginning of the second half, and it worked, and then they had to bring in... Mor Morrissey. Yeah, yeah, Morrissey, so... Paulus gets his man in the air, shot, no, ball tipped into the hands of Nicholson. Yeah, you're right, Eric. That's where you want Jordan, not hanging out in the three-point line. 38-33. Nicholson for Woods. Crowd still hanging in this game, but wants another reason to explode. Nicholson for three. Off the mark. Devils have really struggled from behind the arc. They're three for 12. Lazima for Diaz. Now Gomes. Gomes moves on Woods. Gets him in the air, gets it in. There Good it move. Jordan going 17 points now. That is a new season high. Put him right in the paint, let him get to work. 40-33, Delaware Valley by seven. Seven minutes to play. Christian absorbs the contact, gives it off for Carson Woods. Ortman who's had a rough night here, guarded by Diaz. Ortman's gotta come alive right here. Thought that was a reach in, but whistle silent and still gets the roll. Oliver Ortman with the touch, seven points for the grad student, and that stops what was a 9 0 run by Delvell. 40 35, Aggies by five. Paulus? I guarantee they're looking for Gomes again. Lazima. Aggies are just three for 10 from three, so Ortman reaches out and knocks it away. Delaware Valley, who's seen a lot of zone defense over the last, oh, I can't even count them anymore, years. Paulus checks out. Godly Mark, who's had a quiet night so far, checks in. Mark finished strong against Misericordia. Gomes. To the rack, no, Purnell Gee gets the offensive rebound though. Purnell, quick trigger, shot, no, Ortman rebound. I'd like to see Purnell take that to the rim if you're gonna take a quick shot. 40-35, 6.07 to play. Ortman for three, no, and the rebound by Gee. Lazima will bring the ball up the floor, he'll run point. Mark, Godly Mark will play shooting guard. No, maybe not for very long. It's Coach Kaba's face. Shot from Purnell, no. And either neither Gee nor Ortman can just find the touch here tonight. The two guys combined are six for 19. We only point that out because they're the two teams leading scorers yeah. and rebounders. Ortman garlered by Mark. 
Good job by Mark on the back screen. Ortman fakes three. Will pull up from the foul line, and again, no. And Lazima with the rebound. 5-14 to play, Lazima. Loses the ball. Three on two, Devils on the break. Richardson hangs, shot, no. Christian, yes, with the follow. Miles Christian, his first basket in a while. He's got four now. And the Aggies' lead is down to three. And they'll take a timeout. Like I said, uh, coming out of that, that timeout, as long as FDU can keep us within a two, three-point game, I mean, the game's not over, and they did just that. And look at the momentum now they have. They're clapping on the bench. They're feeling good. Yep. and They know they've absorbed a, a big punch from the Aggies and are still in the game. And it looked like Ibadapa was getting ready to check in. I'm not too sure where he... Fits into things offensively. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, I don't. I don't I, know I, either. I, th I thought. I really thought. Uh, yeah, the big problem. Holmes was doing a great job in the paint. Exactly. The big the problem for for Ibadapo is the only place he's really going to be effective is where you want Jordan Gomes to be. It's it's having two centers or two forwards in the same spot. And again, I can get it if Morrissey's in because again, it's big body versus big body. But Morrissey's not even in right now. No. So I guess I guess Tom does have the height advantage and they can just start feeding him, but yeah. Gomes is the hot hand. Why not just right. keep riding it with him? Well, we'll see. 40 to 37, Delaware Valley up by three. Mark, Gomes is still out there. They're both out there. So that paint's going to be crowded then. Yeah. Ibadapo kicks out. Mark for three. Yes. Godly Mark. Three-pointer. He's the Aggies' leading three-point shooter in terms of percentage, but he's got a very strange stroke where he needs space to get it off. He got it there, and the Aggies lead by six. Almost comes out of Mark's chest when he shoots it. Christian needs to work on Ibadapo. Crowd riding Christian as he flips it nearly out of bounds. Six on the shot clock. Newman... Down for Christian. Gomes intercepts. Good defensive possession there. Three on three, not really numbers. And Ibadapo will pull it out. And that's the right move. Six-point lead for Delaware Valley. Four minutes to play. Gomes drives. Got by his man and scores. Jordan Gomes, 17 points. Aggies by eight. Well, I guess that's why I'm up here. Obviously, they saw something with Tom and uh, Gomes being on the, on the floor at the same time. So, Newman, wide open three, you bet. And that was as predictable as the sun rising in the morning right there. Wide, wide open. Slanovic talking to Newman, and I'm sure that's a pleasant conversation as Aiden Newman has kept the Devils in this game. Newman and Morrissey, two guys, two reserves to the Devils, have 19 points. Ortman has nine, but he's four for 14, and the rest of the Devils have been pretty quiet. Yeah, coach is telling Newman there, all right, listen, buddy, you're getting the ball now. Yes. Ortman's been struggling. You're going to be, you're going to, we're going to live and die by you. Delaware Valley 45, FDU Florham 40. Delaware Valley trying to win two in a row for the first time since they beat, if two in a row in conference, for the first time since they beat, well, Misericordia and Florham to start the conference season. So after that, Delaware Valley went to Arcadia and got absolutely demolished by the Knights who were 0-7 at the time. Lost to uh, Lycoming, lost to Kings, Got a couple of COVID wins where the other team forfeited. Ibadapo, no. He with the rebound. Puts it up. Got it. Count it. Going to the line. What a shot from Gee. And I think Carson Woods, the unlucky foul recipient, who didn't do much other than get tripped over. And now they're bringing back in Morrissey for Thomas because they know they're just too much size now on the Del Val side. Yep. And Purnell does get the free throw. So that gives Purnell eight points. 
seven rebounds as well. Ibadapo checks out. Edward Jones returns for DelVal. Aggies up by eight. This is their largest lead of the game. 3-11 to play. Ortman. Nicholson. Over for Ortman, guarded by Gee. He'll pull up for three, and it's just not his night. Ortman of four of 15, and he's one for six from behind the arc. And the Aggies will just run a little bit of clock here, 2.45 to play. Well, a very little bit of clock. Gee for three, got it! <laughs> Purnell Gee for three, Aggies by 11. That's how many Purnell has. Nicholson across the timeline. Nicholson gets away with a little bit of a push ball, knocked away, and a foul. Loose ball foul, not a shooting foul, and they're going to get zero. That would be Matt Paulus. Paulus is first, second. Team sixth. Newman's going to be guarded by Edward Jones, is going to make things harder on him. Good job by Mark to tip the ball out for Paulus. It's a three-on-one break. And Carson Woods with a kick save and a butte. Seriously, it's about the only way they were going to stop that fast break. Yeah. Fifty-one forty. Aggies by 11. Again, Aggies right in the hunt for a home playoff game as we aren't quite down the stretch. We've got seven more games, six more conference games to go after this one. But the teams they're battling with, Arcadia is losing, 55-47. Mr. Accordia is winning. Remember, the Delaware Valley has the tiebreaker over Mr. Accordia. Paulus for Gomes. Mark for three. Aggies for a 14-point lead. And the big guys have come alive. Second three for Mark. Aggies with their largest advantage. Inside minute 45. Morrissey guarded by Gomes. Good defense from Mark. Makes Morrissey pick up his dribble. Newman looking for some space. Tough shot. Good defense. Doesn't fall. Ortman follow. No. And a foul on Ort. No, on Morrissey. Excuse me for the offensive foul. No, 13. That's Oliver Ortman who they got the foul. That's Ortman's first. Miles Christian will check in. Morrissey will check out. Football team's got something against them. Yeah, I'm not sure what, what it is about Miles Christian they don't <laughs> like. <laughs> on, Monday, on Saturday, it was Chris Robinson of Misericordia. Today, it's, it's him for some reason. Mark wants to go to Gee. Gee wants to go to work. Oh! He's got that more off that. Wow. On you. He's, got that, he's got a good burst of speed. And you saw right there, that little, that little jab and then the spin move. and 13-point lead. Woods comes down with a devil's desperate for some points. Shot. Yes. Surprised Newman didn't take that three there. He's hit a couple there from yep. that exact same spot. And they need a three, not a two there. Only 47 seconds left. I don't think it's going to matter anyway. 13 points for Newman as Nicholson slows down and crashes into Mark. Devils have a couple more fouls to give here before the Aggies get to the foul. Nope, I'm sorry. That was that was the seventh. I thought that was the sixth. So godly Mark will head to the free throw line. 67% free throw shooter. Averaging 14 points, two and a half rebounds per game. Sophomore from West Orange, New Jersey. Free throw no good, and Ortman grabs the rebound. Devils not showing a whole lot of urgency here. Down 14 in the final minute. Ortman finds Newman, and Newman is fouled, and he'll go to the free throw line. Well, the nation's longest winning streak in college basketball is over. It was on the women's side of Division III college basketball. Hope College, which had a 61-game winning streak, loses tonight 
70 to 62. Looks like Purnell stepped out right yeah. there. Just gonna fight the call, no reason to. Don't get a technical. No. Aggies have finished very strong here since it was 38 37. It's an 18 5 run. And that is out of, well, not out of bounds. Newman with the rebound. Nicholson will try a three. That's no good, and the Devils just can't buy a three pointer. No reason to foul in the final 15 seconds, and FDU Florham won't. Well, Gordon, it's not how you start, it's how you finish, and maybe uh, maybe a little bit too too close to the finish. <laughs> Three minutes, I would say, is when they really start to pull away, but good win. Definitely needed a win, for sure. Like we said at the beginning of the game, if you want to play at home in February, you got to win at home in January. And wasn't pretty the last two nights, or the last two games, but with a chance to stay on a roll, Delaware Valley gets the win here tonight. Again, they will be at Kings. That's a winnable game on Saturday. And then home for Arcadia. That's a big game next Wednesday. Let's get you a look at the uh, final statistics here. Delaware Valley shoots 44% from the floor. 6 of 13 from behind the arc. That's 46%. Just 2 of 7 from the foul line. Del uh, FDU Florham, rough shooting night. 16 for 48. That's 33%. 4 of 18. That's 22%. And 6 of 12 from the foul line. Aggies were being out-rebounded 21-13 to 13 at the half. The Devils only had 15 more rebounds the rest of the game. They finished with 36, which is a little above their season average. Plus-minus uh, ratio. Devils with 8 assists to 20 turnovers. That's minus 12. And Aggies are a minus 3. 8 my eight assists to 11 turnovers. Individual standouts for Delaware Valley. Jordan Gomes with 19 points for Del Val, 9 of 15 from the floor. Just one of five from the foul line, six assists and one, uh, six rebounds and one assist. 13 points for Purnell Gee, for, who came alive late, five of nine from the floor. He hit both his threes. He had seven rebounds and two steals. Other scores for Del Val, Godley Mark finishes with 10. Five points for Matt Paulus. Three points for Francis Robles Montas. Two points for Richard Thomas, Ewan's Lizima, and Nestor Diaz. And Lizima's two were really big because it came at a point where Delaware Valley was struggling. He had a steal and a layup to give the Aggies the lead, and then a steal and a pass to Gomes to put them ahead by three points. So Lizima's two points were much bigger than they look in the box score. For FDU Florham, leading scorer tonight was Aiden Newman. He did very well off the bench. He had 13 points. Good game for Michael Morrissey, 8 points on 4 for 6 shooting. Oliver Ortman finished with 9 points, but 4 of 16 from the floor. 6 points from uh, Miles Christian, 5 for Woods, and a single point for Gerard Nicholson. Devils leading rebounder tonight. Three different guys had 6, Woods, Ortman, and Michael Morrissey. Again, your final numbers, Delaware Valley, 56, FDU Florham, 42. Delaware Valley improves to 6-4 and four in conference officially, 4-4 four and four in games that have been played. FDU Florham with the loss drops to 3-15 and 15 overall, 0-10 oh in conference. And the Aggies will play scoreboard watching. Mr. Accordia is going to win by 20-something. They're up with... 80 to 58 with a few minutes to go. Arcadia is losing to Stevens. That's good news for Del Val with 219 to play. And uh, DeSales still has under 40 points now with five minutes to play. So I don't know what to make of that one. Final thoughts in this one, Eric? I think you about summed it up. Uh, like I said, like you said, uh, big players showed up at the end of the game. That's what mattered. And like I said, it's going to be who what team wakes up first. And luckily for us, that was uh, the Aggies. So... Like I said, good win overall, needed win. Can't lose these type of games, and uh, yeah, let's just keep rolling. Aggies at Kings on Saturday, home for Arcadia next Wednesday night. Women at 6, men at 8. Until then, for our producer Tony and our cameraman Shad, for our kitchen, this is Gordon Mann. Have a good night, everyone.